Well, well, well. Hello, fellow bookquesters. It is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today, I introduce you to this great Heroes of Olympus Percy Jackson book. Heroes of Olympus, book to the sun of Neptune, by Rick Riordan, Mythmaster himself. And well, let's get right on to it. This is a book that that I have read over six times, and I bet that anyone can enjoy it if they just acquire the simple ability to read. And they will explore worlds of wonder and fantasy, just like me. Let's get on to it. The set of Neptune, Percy Jackson, our great demigod hero. Son of Poseidon and and、um, a son of a mortal and a god, a Olympian god, mind you. In the last series, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, he finds out that the Greek gods are actually real, and he is actually the son of one of the strongest gods there is, Poseidon, the god of the sea. And 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 one day he wakes up with no memory, and he had been chased around by Gorgons, the famous Medusa, the snake-haired lady who could turn people into stone. Who they had been they had been chasing, on Percy around for quite a long time, enough to annoy Percy. I mean, he was pretty hard to kill, but they were gonna find out how to kill him pretty soon. And he was very tired. And so, and so one day he reached a Roman camp that he didn't know it even existed, even though his memories were fuzzy.、Uh, I can tell you where he is actually from. He's a Greek demigod, which means he's from camp half blood, where Chiron, Chiron the centaur, teaches all many, many, many Greek demigods. But Camp Jupiter, on the other hand, follows the Roman way of the gods. For example, the Roman version of Zeus is is the great Jupiter. The Roman version of Poseidon, you guessed it, Neptune. The Roman version of Hades, you guessed it, Pluto. So and so. And well, he Percy Jackson has found a Roman camp, a camp that follows the Roman way of the gods, and they work in a legion together. Like they they use their spears and their and their and their shields and their spears together to make like a killing machine almost. They work together. The legion does. The Greek demigods, however, work on solo quests and get their. Fame alone, and sometimes in a small group, but you but the Romans um are one. They are most they're like one. They're a mass of one, one the killer force. They become a wave of a a wave of arrows, almost like a wave of pure destruction. As for the Greeks, they're like shing shing shing. The Romans are like what like. Two hundred of them. Greece is like Sheen, let's go. That's just Greek and Roman, by the way. And so Percy Jackson arrives at the Roman camp, and it is so familiar yet so different. And and as he goes on and on and on, and then he find and he is sent on a quest, a quest to unchain Thanatos, the god of death. You see. The the you see Gaia the the evil Earth goddess is rising. She wants to she wants to destroy the world, bring the gods of Olympus. You guess that their downfall. I don't know. She she aren't grandmas supposed to be nice? I mean, great grandmas. I mean, aren't they supposed to be a bit nicer than that? I mean, destroy their descendants. It's kind of sad actually. Primordial relationships always confuse me. And well, so Gaia is raising her sons, her sons, the giants, 
12 of them, each made to, to oppose an Olympian. And the one that was supposed to oppose Neptune is marching with a gigantic army of monsters to march to cap Jupiter and destroy it. Wipe it off the map completely. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, you have to say, that's pretty a dire threat. And the monsters can't even die. What? Because those monsters, well, the monsters, what, what, what? Since Thanatus, the god of death, is chained up, he can't do anything. If he dies, they revive in like two seconds. How sad is that? So basically, Thanatus. I mean, Thanatus. They have to find Thanatus, and they have to um, they have to free him, or else the monsters will destroy Camp Jupiter. High stakes, a Percy Jackson novel. What did you expect? And and uh, and uh, their quest leads to Alaska. The land beyond the gods, the land beyond the Olympian gods' influence. There, the gods can do nothing, and there, there is a there is a giant, a giant made to oppose Pluto, Alicarnius, Alicarnius. Why do these Greek and Roman names have to be this hard and ridiculous? You just have to find out. They sound cool and they look cool, I mean, when you read it, but you can't seem to pronounce them out loud. You'll see. And he's made to oppose Pluto. He has a rather surprising historic connection with Hazel Levisk, who is the, who is the companion of Percy Jackson. And, and, and Percy Jackson leads Frank Zhang, a Chinese-Canadian, set of Mars, the, the Roman version of Ares, the god of war, and, of course, Hazel, the, so the daughter of Pluto, who can control riches, gold, gems, around and around to her will. Alecanus, a giant made completely out gems can be only destroyed when dragged out of his homeland and his homeland is Alaska and Alaska is pretty big mind you could Percy Jackson and his newfound friends in Camp Jupiter could they defeat Alcinous free Thanatus and arrive to Camp Jupiter which is like at the other side of the world which is seriously at the other side of the world, kind of, and which is really far, and and go there till the Feast of Fortuna, which is like four days away, and could they stop the evil giant that was born to oppose Neptune from destroying Camp Jupiter? I'm not gonna spoil the story for you, I mean, come on, but let's just, this is a spoiler, kind of. There's a next book, and those Romans are fine. Don't worry, there's a next book. And those Romans aren't all, you know, passed away. I mean, dead. I mean, stabbed in the heart, whatever. And it's a great, sarcastic Percy Jackson book. And like always, a bookwester and a bookwester.